I gotta go to work. <laughs> Looks like a beautiful morning. A freeze is good, but this part is annoying. Wow, this thing is terrible. We're gonna be switching to a different field this morning. We're gonna go north of here a ways. The beans just aren't ready. We've had a ton of frost and a ton of moisture. They've taken on way too much moisture. So we're gonna keep moving on corn. We started the power sweep on the floor in the wet tank or the holding tank here this morning. We're gonna get this all empty, get it out of here. That shouldn't take too long. Then I gotta get down here and fix this sump because this sump is supposed to be closed right now. But we've got a problem with it where uh, the slide must be stuck underneath the floor. So I'm gonna have to get in there and try to fix that. Time to get everything going. Jim is checking over the truck. I'm gonna check over the Challenger here. Get the grain cart up and going so we can head out to the field. We're having a problem with the tarp on the grain cart, so we're gonna unfold this thing. And I'm gonna climb up top there and see what's going on in the front of that tarp while Dad rolls it from behind. So I think all we got going on here is that the tarp got underneath this. He's just gotta loosen that end up and I'll pull it over and it should be good. Huh? This part here getting under the end. Now she's rolling straight from front to back. Beautiful. For those who haven't seen inside of a grain cart, there you go. Pretty simple. Runs to the bottom with a great big auger. So what's going on here is that the slides that we use to open up the floor and let the grain go down to get into the auger, one of these center ones is broken. It's not actually sliding closed. So this is always open. Where this one, we can slide it open and shut. There you can see the green slide that stops the corn from getting down to the auger. Sukup, which is the manufacturer of this bin, has a really easy way to attach these slides to, uh, to this shaft right here using a collar with a set screw in it or a set bolt. Unfortunately, a couple or three times a year we have one come loose and it ends up underneath the floor down back in here and we've got to fish it out and bring it back in here and get it set into place. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'm trying to get the camera so you can see it. Either way, this one is deep. This is going to be tricky. So right now I'm using a magnet and I can reach it. Unfortunately, can't get it closer it won't move so we'll try this thing wonder this one I could almost I could almost get my hand in there but I don't know that I'd ever get it back out and I like this hand so let's see if I can get the players on it here I'm probably gonna lose a set of players in the process you can see it, you can feel it, but you just can't clamp on it. Yeah. It's, the it's, shaft has to be moving in it. Ow! Move the shaft back and forth. Let's see if anything changes inside there. Okay, go back. Yes, yeah, stop. Collar is welded. Because it's only that. held with one, one bolt. The collar is not welded. The bolt that holds oh. the gate to it is the set screw. Oh, that's how, oh, that is so stupid. There's no moisture in the green plants. There's not? No. Huh. Really? After yeah. that frost? But yeah, the moisture's already the sun's taking it off yeah. already. Yeah, the bees inside the pot are just well up. Yeah. You know. Look good that way. Yep, that's alright. Go back the other way and close it. Simple as that. You can see we are back at it out here. He's got the combine full. There's plenty of room on the sides of that hopper, but for some reason it gets full in the very front so quickly. And especially with him going downhill, he was gonna make some more cab corn. And there really isn't much room on top of the cab for any more corn, so he's gonna cut a spot out there for me to pull up next to him. The reason we are cutting across the center of this field is because it's a long field and we can't get from one end to the other, so we got a dump going both directions. So he'll go down this side and this side. That way the auger, is always in the middle all the time so that we can dump go in either direction. I'm not 
sure what, but Dad wants to hop out with me and take a look at something behind the combine. He must be questioning something, so hopefully we don't have a problem. We got trails of corn coming from somewhere. Hope not. We have got a definite issue with corn coming out of somewhere that it's not supposed to. So he's going to empty out here and start it up and take off. I'm going to walk alongside and see if I can see anything. Get some kind of an idea where that corn is coming from. Not see anything going on underneath here that shouldn't be. We still don't know what's going on. We're gonna check the header out here. Mainly what I'm looking at is the deck plates or the stripper plates in between the rows. Coming from somewhere in the middle mostly. We had a cob stuck in this row right in front of me. I can't say for sure that this is what's causing it, but this deck plate is way out of adjustment, just like the one we had the other day. So apparently we gotta go through all the deck plates on this when we get a chance. But we're gonna adjust that and see if that's maybe part of our issue. Oh, she's tight. It moves, doesn't feel right though. Oh, I think it was loosened all the way up. I couldn't get it to really break loose. It's like it spun hard. I wonder if it isn't just spun out all the way. Because when I hammered on it, it went right into place. We better go through all of these. I, I mean, we don't know for sure that that's the issue, but it wasn't helping anything. No, and it, it was mainly in one spot though, too. In the back? Yeah. Well, this is pretty centered, so if it's throwing the corn all over. Yeah, I thought it was over on this side. And I right did side. too, I did too. Well, we found that deck plate being out of adjustment. That wasn't helping anything, but I'm pretty convinced that that was not really our problem. There's still something else going on, but it only does it sometimes, not all the time. So we're gonna go a thousand feet here and jump out again and check it. That's frustrating. Well, it seemed like that made a big difference. We also opened the sieves up a couple numbers. I can't believe a couple numbers on the sieves made that big a difference looks pretty good right here so we're just gonna keep a really close eye on it and keep checking in on it there you go guys for the green boys now we got another green horse out here combine check we're still finding a clear trail of corn that starts about right there just right of center of the machine so he's gonna drive up to where he stopped and see where that lines up to on the machine okay See what we got. Something's going on in here. This corn should not be sitting on the axle. I don't know where it's coming through though. We're gonna raise the chopper up so we can get a better view of what's going on inside there. Both of us took a look and can't figure out what the issue is. I could turn that light on in here. So this is the main cleaning area of the machine. The corn's supposed to I fall through to here. Cylinder, okay? Oh, you're gonna shift it? Yeah. Okay. He's gonna slow the cylinder down right now. Uh, there should be a marking on there somewhere. It looks like an I and an N and a, oh, it's one and a two. It's a one and a two. And it looks like it's a neutral now. Yeah. Do I go to two or one? Yes. I think we're looking through and I don't know if I got the one or not. But for some reason, somehow, the grain is getting over the top of this instead of falling through and it's coming out here. Hey, I got a question for a guy that knows a thing or two about John Deere combines. We're, uh, we got the 9870 out here and we're running the rotor about 400. I don't know if it is the rotor or not, but we're losing a 
ton of corn like it's coming out the grain loss monitors I don't uh, it's coming it's the one the the loss monitor right behind the uh, behind the sieves where it's where it sits flat there there's corn falling out onto the axles yeah we got the sieves at uh, 19 and the or no 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 15 and the and the chaffer at 21 1200 1150 this is wetter now we were running 23 now we just got into some stuff that's actually 26 or 7 but we're not gonna move because it's gonna rain in a few hours but it was doing it on the other stuff too on the 23 percent stuff well uh, we ended up messing around with the chaffer for a while we opened it up a little bit that's a setting in the back of the machine that allows more or less particles to get through it to separate the grain from the from the stalks from the plants that are in there we open that up a little bit and we turned up the fan speed and that's what blows through the chaffer and the sieves to do more separation. It seemed to help quite a bit, but now what we're running into is we got into a different hybrid. This is a different corn and it's really wet. And so what we're gonna do is turn around out of here and go over to a different spot in the field where we've got a different variety yet and try that hybrid and see if it's any drier than what this is. I'm sure there's plenty of people wondering why we're harvesting right now when the corn is still wet and it's early October but it's got plenty of time to dry down. Up here it's cold, it's 30 degrees every morning lately and it's wet so we really don't have drying weather. The corn isn't going to dry down very quickly at all from here on out and the thing is we could get a snow on it at any point. It actually snowed a few days ago. If we could thresh the soybeans out they're still too wet. They're about 17-18% moisture, which is too wet to store them at. So we would have to run the soybeans through the grain dryer as well. We need to get the crops out, get out what we can, and we're just trying to balance whether that's corn or soybeans right now. So we need to be going on something, but we're running out of dry crops. This corn is wet here as well. We've got some drier stuff. We know it's drier five miles Couldn't north of here because it was planted off. sooner. And we know that it's drier up there, but it's gonna take us a good hour and a half to two hours to get all the machines moved up there and get going. And there's a chance of, there's 80% chance of it raining here in about four hours. So to take two hours and move five, five miles to do two hours of harvesting just isn't worth it for us. So right now we're frustrated. We're trying to figure out what to do. Interesting enough, what we're combining right now is actually an early maturity hybrid. It should be dry, but it was planted 10 days later than the stuff that we were working on, and it's about 4% wetter, which is pretty considerable. So that just really shows the importance of trying to get your stuff planted early here in our neck of the woods to get those 10 extra days of heat on that seed while it gets going. Um, is proven to be really critical here. Unfortunately, we had a lot of rainy spells this spring, so we've got a lot of corn like this that got planted later. We got some in early, and then we got this planted later, and uh, this is proving, proving to me that um, we need to push in the spring the way we do to try and get everything in as soon as we can. Well, we found some corn that's a little bit drier. It's not dry enough, but we're over on the other side of the field. Now we've got an issue with the header. Uh, I don't think it's a big issue. I think he just got too low, but I got some stuff in here. I'm going to dig out for him. You can see here it was uh, digging into the ground. So we'll get this out of here. All clean. Jeez, it's getting cold out here. So we're looking at radar. It doesn't look great, but it looks better than we thought it was going to at this time. So we're going to pull out of this field because this is now all 27, 28% corn and it's looking less like we might get the rain we thought we were going to get, or it might at least hold off longer, and hopefully get a few hours up there tonight. How you doing, Digi? How you doing? Are you scared of the camera, Digi? Time for a quick dryer check. Too wet. That'll do it. Gotta restock my groceries. And the convoy is off.
I don't enjoy opening up fields at night or dumping into the grain cart while standing, but I sure do love harvesting at night. Oh gee, Nate, how's your apple? Oh, not bad, Josh, how's your apple? Not bad. Well, for Pete's sake, that's gonna put an end to our night. Well, that does it for us tonight. It's only 9.30, but with that rain coming down, we definitely can't harvest anything. Trucks wouldn't even make it out of the field if we would have gone another, another load, probably. And uh, we can't run the grain dryer in the rain because with all the moving belts we got going on out there, eventually one of them is going to slip, and then it's going to burn a belt up and plug an auger and do all kinds of unpleasant things. So we shut everything down for the night, and uh, we're done. We'll see what we got in the morning. It doesn't look like it's going to rain too much, uh, so hopefully things will dry up tomorrow and we'll be back at it again. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, <laughs> my